Hello guys, S2W here as your average consumer with your next casual consumers review. It's been some time since I've done an Adidas Yeezy 350v2 video, as my last 350v2 review was the Zebra colorway that dropped on its first release. With a blink of an eye, that was already 8 months ago, and now 8 months later, a whole new craze has started again, which to a lot of people is known as the Yeezy season. Ending the year of 2017, and in a span of 2 weeks, Adidas launched two new 350v2 colorways in the month of November, and a third one is about to drop 2 and a half weeks later from this video's upload date. Today, I have one of the two colorways that already dropped, the Adidas Yeezy 350v2 Beluga 2.0 here for an in-depth review. I was able to grab this pair off of the Adidas Confirmed app on my phone, which was only accessible to Canadians half a year ago from the time I recorded this. If you don't know how to use the app, make sure you check out the beginner video I have made on my channel. For those who are really new to this, this shoe is a special collab done by Adidas with famous American rapper, singer, songwriter, record producer, and fashion designer Kanye West. For this particular Yeezy colorway, it was rumored to the world that it's the most stocked colorway so far in the Yeezy V2 lineup. Both Europe and the US had about 85 to 90,000 pairs available online, and that's without even counting boutiques or store raffle pairs. Canada had 3,000 pairs available online, only a small fraction of the amount of 90,000. But it's still a lot sadly, considering 500 is already a lot for us. Also, everyone has been calling this colorway as the Beluga 2.0s, reason being is that it resembles the OG colorway of the 350v2 Belugas. But do they live up to the iconic colorway of the first v2 model? Let's take a closer look at these sneakers. Looking at these in hand, the first thing I will admit is that the colorway do look pretty similar to the OG V2 Belugas when you're looking at it by itself. We have a great upper made out of Prime Knit, which is Adidas' popular knit technology known for its adaptability, ventilation, and sock hugging fit. Nothing much has changed visual appearance wise, we still see multiple darkened stripes swishing across the shoe most prominently seen on the medial side of the sneaker. This was first seen on the Yeezy V2 Belugas, and then Adidas took it off for a few colorways and then brought it back again on the Zebras, Frozen Yellow Yeezys, and now these Belugas 2.0s. On the lateral side, the first Yeezy V2s were a lot more eye-catching because of a large brushstroke or stripe slashing across the side in a contrasting color. Since the drop of the V2 breads, they have made the stripe blend in with the base colorway. You can still see the shape of the brushstroke minimally, however, it's just not as loud as the first ones, which may or may not work against your preferences. We still continue to see the letters and numbers that spells out SPLY-350, where 350 is this model number and what a lot of people have speculated that SPLY actually means supply, taken from Yeezy Supply which is the online retailer store by Kanye West. These characters are done in orange but in certain lighting and makes them look a lot redder for some reason. The recent V2 models have these characters knitted, mirrored, and in reverse too, whereas on the OG Belugas was red normally and the Black Friday pairs has one shoe red in regular formation while the other in reverse. Prime Knit is known for its stretchability as well, but on this model, the only stretchy region is the midfoot area because there are no additional layers of materials enveloping the knit. And if you push the upper out, you will see some orange fabric peeking out of the pores of the upper for a subtle detailed design. This is coming from the orange knitting that's mainly visible on the inside lateral lining of the sneaker, kinda like an inverse coloration as the characters inside are grey instead. On the opposite side, we have an inverse of greys as well with a pixelated-esque patterning inside. At the forefoot or toe box area, there's an internal caging system that makes the upper there more solid and dense. It's still flexible but nowhere as stretchy as something like the NMD or Ultra Boost Prime Knits. Whereas on the back internal side of the shoe, it won't stretch much here because it's padded with a layer of wall cushioning, giving our Achilles and ankle a nice soft padding for heel rest, comfort, and stability. This shoe also comes with a removable insole, which is seen regularly on every previously released Yeezy V2s. On this pair, the upper is in grey, with the Adidas, the Trefoil logo, and the word Yeezy printed in orange on it. While on the bottom of the insole is a white layer of foam with intricate detailing that most people use for legit checks between real or fakes. On the topic of legit checks, another local winner who picked up his pair where I picked the mine has shown me an interesting picture and it's a sizing hand tag. I'm just putting it here to let you know that at least in Canada, there are some inconsistencies with the type of tags they used. Depending on which factory your pair was made from, different sizing tags were printed and used. Then inside the shoe without the insole, there are some boost windows on a piece of felt like fabric that allows us to see the cushioning. Running down the short pull tab inside these shoes are three 3M strips to give the shoe extra branding and flashy elements. 
and at the back of the shoes, we will see a heel tab that has been implemented on the V2s after the Black Friday pairs released last year in November 2016. Useful to use when you want to put your shoes on easily, and looks a lot more fashionable than without one in my opinion. On this pair, this heel tab has an orange dotted line running horizontally, almost like it's a staple design of the Yeezy V2s now with this look, which was first launched on the Bread V2s with this design. At the hood of the sneakers, we will see the iconic middle stitching running from the toe box to the tongue in a clean and unique crisscross stitching pattern. The grey rope laces of this shoe are threaded through into the upper and then back out, with the knit protected by a suede patch inside the shoe that would prevent the knit from ripping apart when we tighten them. As we flip over the one piece tongue, lying right between the suede patches is a synthetic fiber running parallel to the crisscross stitching right above the center of the shoe, possibly to prevent the rougher stitching here from rubbing against the skin of our feet. Looking at the midsole, we will see a ribbed rubber encasement surrounding the boost cushioning technology sheltered inside. This rubber is very flexible as well according to my previous experience on earlier models. Translucent too, as we can see the whites from the cushioning showing up underneath. Of course, the cushioning is called Boost for those who don't know, which is a high energy returning cushion with marshmallow like compressions as if we're walking on clouds. All of this Boost material is inside this aggressive looking rubber shield, and the only way you're going to see the cushioning, other than removing the insole, is if we flip over the shoes. On this underside, there are several Boost windows at the forefront and one large one at the back, all opened up to what I presume will allow the Boost to expand and contract that will eventually help us push off the ground better. What I do realize is that for the boost window at the back, there used to be either a cross formation or one linear line formation of boost patterning here. But now, it seems like it's a shovel formation with the stick at the top and then a ton of boost markings on the other end. It could be different on other sizes, but this is what it looks like on my size 11. Going back to its original also color schemes, the also they used on this colorway is one unified color, which is a switch up in the recently released zebras and frozen yellows where it was two toned instead. At the tip of this outsole, we'll see the Adidas branding, that at the heel area right under the large boost window is the word boost. Anyways, here are some Adidas Yeezy Boost 350v2 Beluga 2.0 fit footage. Fit wise, I always buy my Yeezy V2s half size up because I have wide feet, and I hate how low and constricting they feel up near the toe box. Half size up is definitely the way to go for me on this one, because for some reason, this colorway feels a little more tight than my other size 11 V2s. It's not unwearable, but sure doesn't feel the same on my feet so hopefully it stretches out a bit. I would still advise everyone to get your most comfortable Yeezy sizing, but if you haven't tried one on before, narrow feet may get through this at their true to size, but wide feet definitely go up half a size on this colorway. Now don't get me wrong, it's not because it's narrow up front, it's more because the prime knit at the toe box pushes down against our toenails hard, so the majority of the discomfort will be from there in my opinion. But other than that, comfort wise, these are amazing because the boost material here is very reactive on this silhouette. Some even consider Yeezys more comfortable than Ultra Boost, so that's saying something. The good thing on this model is that you can actually feel the boost squishing under your feet and not just the pure hype model. They are comfortable. I wouldn't say they are more comfortable than the Ultra Boost or 9317 Boost in my opinion because of the tougher prime knit, but they are up there in close comfort levels. Price wise, these were $300 Canadian before tax. Because there were so many stock available, it won't be hard finding these in the resale market if you missed out and it'll most likely be the cheapest colorway there is because of the immense stock numbers. The colorway looks decent on its own and I guess we can finally say that Adidas and Kanye West is pushing the everybody can get Yeezy statement. I have some footage here comparing the OG Beluga versus this 2.0 and to my surprise, when placed together, they are not the same color at all. These 2.0s have a much darker grey to it, and even the laces are different. The 2.0 rope laces don't have a design on them. Other than that, it's the visual differences that we can spot easily, which is the bright orange stripe and heel tabless of the OG versus the stripeless but heel tab 2.0s. Which do you like the best? In my opinion, I still like the OG model a lot more because it's the first iconic colorway of a new lineup and flashy in a good way with its neon orange stripe. This 2.0 got toned down a lot to be honest. They still look nice, but I'll take the zebra or breads first before I choose this colorway. Anyways, throw me some likes if you liked this video, and let me know in the comments how well you did in this Beluga 2.0 release. Were you able to at least score one pair, or were you like some others that I know of who went to raffles and did everything, but still scored zero? Let me know down below. That's it for today, S2W, signing off.